So welcome to our product showcase, except today we're actually showcasing something that's not necessarily products, but actually code that runs on our products. So Marshall, what are you showing today? Today I'm uh, showing off our modified HTTP server. And uh, normally what it allows us to do is to connect a server to an access point, which is just a generic router, okay. to a single client. Okay. What we ended up doing was we changed it around, and now what we're getting is we're having the client, or the server, connect to the access point that then services all of these clients. Okay, and so why the iPad? So the iPad is actually connecting to the server and getting the, a website off of it, and then what we can do is we can change the, uh, the pattern on this by hitting the radio button and hitting submit. Now what we should see is these LEDs are now going to be changing to one. Let's see, so this is updated, this updated, and we're waiting. There we go. Okay. So it may take a little bit, but it is, is actually working reliably. Okay, so a one to, from a one to one to a one to many. Exactly. All right, so what boards are you using right here? Uh, right now I'm just using the WF32. Okay. Um, a basic router that I got from anywhere. Okay. And uh, I'm using an iPad to look at this website that is being hosted on the server, but we can also run this with a shield on our Max32. Okay, so the Wi-Fi shield and then the Max32, yes. that's about the same. Okay, so the iPad is connected to the access point yes. with the server. Precisely. Okay, and then uh, and it's pushing basically to each of these clients the new LED pattern. Yes. Awesome, no, that's kind of neat. So Larissa, what have you been working on? Oh, well, um, well first, these are, uh, I'm kind of excited about these. So uh, but these are our WS2812 LEDs. And uh, WS2812 LEDs are basically, they're RGB LEDs with a little microcontroller inside of it. And what it does is it makes it so each individual pixel is addressable. You can also chain them as long as you want. And up until now, there hasn't been a really good way to run any of these with a chip kit. That's kind of what I wanted to show. So I have the Max32 right now, and it's wired up to a um, strip of uh, these WS2812 LEDs. And when I plug it in, I have a pattern running on it. So which <laughs> boards can we run this on? Uh, well, we can run them right now on anything that has two channels of DMA and, um, and a fast enough SPI bus. And so the way that the code is written is that basically you don't even have to touch any of the processor time. You can just use the DMA and the SPI so you can run the processor doing other things. And today, those two boards are the MAX32 and the WF32. Well, that is really cool. Yeah, it's also super bright, so yeah. Well, what do you think we could do if we tried to mix these two projects? You mean have internet-enabled LEDs? Yeah. I think we should. Let's do it. All right, so we have the LEDs running on two WF32s. And uh, that's, still the that's still the server. Yeah, the server is still being hosted right now. So. What I can okay. end up doing is... And so this one's plugged in over here, so not connected at all. And this yep. one is plugged into power, and so there's some LEDs here. So let's see what happens. Now the question is, are you feeling patriotic? Because I think I am. Okay, so this one is... It's updated. Us. This one is... Just taking a second. There, there it go. goes. Okay, and then... Let's try something else. All right, so if we have the rainbow rainbow color code, this one already updated, and then this one goes, and okay. there we go. All right, so we have internet connected LEDs.
turn around.